self-care as a concept has existed for as long as we have, but this huge growth in new products, information and technologies is really changing what self-care means as well as how health services are delivered. Self-care interactions can, when optimally designed and implemented, increase access for hard to reach populations and to, to some degree potentially increase privacy and autonomy. But there's also concern that these sorts of technologies can inadvertently increase inequalities and ironically decrease the quality and availability of more formalized care systems, in particularly for the most vulnerable and isolated people in the US and in other countries. This simple and elegant little technology provides the means to address two of the oldest global public health challenges. One, to reduce the morbidities and mortality associated with pregnancy termination, and two, to ensure equal access to safe abortion and the human rights of equality, autonomy, self-determination. COVID has encouraged, has made it easier in some ways for women to get access to these pills. Uh, all of this is done by mail, which of course in this time of COVID has really helped to make it uh, much more significant and easy to deal with than pharmacies, etc. This is a technology that has totally changed the field of family planning. We also know that in many countries around the world, the law still needs to change. We know that in many places where the law has changed, people still don't understand that the law has changed. So health workers are still reluctant to prescribe because they, they don't know what their liability is. And women may be either unaware that the technology is available or still unsure of what their legal liability might be. We developed Ask Ari. We really uh, wanted to help to get people to the right resources and to have the kind of self-reflection which this technology allows us to do. Hi everyone, uh, great to be here today and see all of you. So this is the Ask RE system. We wanted a, a curated place for our students to be able to get this information. The access to, to mental health services has, has really has to ramp up and this is a really great step and an example. Right now, self-care and, and health has tremendous promise, making healthcare more accessible. Virtual humans really help us understand human behavior better because to make them work, you've got to create operational models of reasoning and emotion and communication, perception. And I would argue that perhaps building a successful virtual human is the ultimate test for artificial intelligence. But an important question that we had to deal with is how are people going to respond to virtual humans? So virtual humans have an enormous possibility of, of taking the burden off the, the scarce care, of offering sometimes better care, and the virtual humans have their limitations. Um, they can only take a discussion so many layers deep. They are, I mean, they are limited to what's been programmed. The virtual human might give the impression of authority, but might not have it at all. If we're thinking of self-care in access terms, we are thinking that it will increase access, and that's great, but are we at any risk of it being part of a two-channel system in which some people get access to uh, living beings and some get access to a virtual? Do I want to be in a world in which I don't distinguish between machines and human beings? I'm not sure what the answer to that is, but I know for me, it is a puzzlement. In thinking about technologies, we need to be thinking about the forms of society and the forms of politics, which they enable and which shape them as they move through us and around us and in the world. Self-care and diagnostics is actually a really big part of where technology fits into self-care. There's so much to be excited about the idea that some machine at home can look at your eyeball, see in your retina and tell you you have diabetes or tell you you're at risk of heart disease. That is exciting. Who is the person who uses self-care in this way? It is often not people who don't have resources who struggle with access. I think we will get there if we can consider all these issues up front as we think through the technologies we want to spread out into the world and have our patients use. Thanks again to everybody for participating and to the attendees. We hope that uh, we've been able to provide you with some 
Food for Thought. Thanks very much for attending.